السلام عليكم ورحمة الله بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أعزائي الطلبة This lecture about the acute separate of otitis media and otitis media with effusion This is the middle ear cleft which consists to form the ostacan tube tympanic cavity attic editus ad antrum mastoid antrum and the mastoid air cells Inflammatory process within this middle ear cleft is called otitis media. So otitis media refers to an inflammatory process within the middle ear cleft. And the otitis media can be either acute or chronic. In general, disease that persists for more than three months should be considered as a chronic Separative otitis media. Classification of otitis media. Otitis media either suppurative otitis media or the non suppurative. The non suppurative one is also named secretory otitis media, otitis media with effusion, or glue ear. The Suppurative otitis media is subdivided into acute otitis media or chronic otitis media. If the otitis media persists more than three months and there is a perforation of the tympanic membrane, it is a chronic suppurative otitis media, which then subdivided into active chronic suppurative otitis media with persistent otorrhea and the inactive one when there is only a dry perforation and there is no otorrhea. Later on in the next lecture I will talk about the chronic suppurative otitis media. The peak incidence of acute suppurative otitis media in the first two years of life and most of the population will suffer at least one episode of acute separative otitis media in their lifetime. What is the recurrent otitis media or recurrent acute separative otitis media? It is defined as a three or more episode of acute separative otitis media in a six month period or four or more episodes in one year with complete resolution of symptom and signs between the episodes. The causative agent of acute separative otitis media may be bacterial in 70% of the cases or viral in 30%. Streptococcus pneumoniae, Haemophilus influenzae, and Moralic zilla cataralis are the most common pathogen. The clinical features of acute separative otitis media the patient frequently has symptoms of an upper respiratory tract infection. Older children usually complain of earache or otalgia. Infants become irritable and pull on the affected ear. A high fever is often present and may be associated with anorexia, vomiting, and parenteral diarrhea. Otoscopy classically shows a thickened hyperemic tympanic membrane which is immobile on pneumatic otoscopy and this is the gold standard for the diagnosis of otitis media. This is the appearance of pneumatic otoscopy. Further progression of the infective process may lead to the spontaneous rupture of the tympanic membrane resulting in a mucopurulent otorrhea. If this spontaneous rupture occurs, the otology and fever often subside. This is the normal appearance of the purely gray semi-translucent tympanic membrane. In acute separative otitis media, there is a congested Red hyperemic eardrum, red 
congested, thickened, hyperemic, iridrum, sometimes bulging of the tympanic membrane. What is the treatment of acute seborrheic fortis media? The treatment is with antibiotics such as amoxicillin or augmentin or cephalosporins for 7 to 10 days. Anti-inflammatory drugs like ibuprofen or even Panadol is also prescribed in order to alleviate the pain. If there is a perforation, the ear must be kept dry until it has healed with avoidance of water getting into the ear. In a discharging ear, combination of antibiotic and steroid ear drops can also be used. Nasal decongestants may be speed recovery by improving the osteochondral function and hence, middle, and hence middle ear ventilation. In a minority of patients with acute separative otitis media, fail to respond to medical therapy or develop a complication. Here, meringotomy is then indicated to allow the drainage of pus from the middle ear space. <coughs> and this is the picture of how to do a myringotomy. The second subject of our lecture is otitis media with fusion or secretory otitis media or glue ear. Otitis media with fusion is defined as the persistence of serous or mucoid middle ear fusion whatever the type of the fusion, for more than three months. It is the most common cause of hearing loss in children in the developed world and has peaks incidence at two and five years of age. Glue ear affects 70 to 80 percent of children at some time in their life. In most children, it resolves spontaneously. The formation of middle ear fusion frequently occurs after an episode of acute suppurative otitis media. And children with otitis media and diffusion are far more likely to suffer from recurrent acute suppurative otitis media. A number of factors may have a role to play in this condition, but the exact cause remains uncertain, but it is usually associated with poor osteochondral tube function. Clinical features of otitis with media, of otitis media with diffusion, the symptoms, hearing loss, number one, hearing loss, and this is the most common symptom of otitis media with diffusion. Number two, delayed speech and language development or behavioral problems. In younger children, may be the only symptom. Number three, blocked feeling in the ear, which may cause infants and young children to pull at their ears. Number four, asymptomatic, and detected only on routine audiological screening. The signs of otitis media with fusion, number one, dull gray, yellow color tympanic membrane or blue drum. Number two, reduced mobility on pneumatic otoscopy. Number three, air fluid level or small, or small air bubbles within the middle ear fusion. This is the appearance of otitis media with the fusion. You see the color is yellowish retracted membrane with the presence of air bubbles. This is a dull gray retracted tympanic membrane. Here, the normal appearance of the tympanic membrane, air fluid levels, yellow retracted tympanic membrane, and here retracted tympanic membrane with yellowish appearance. And this is a blue drum. When we do tympanogram for the patient with otitis media with effusion, 
we have type B, the flat tympanogram. In adults presenting with a unilateral middle ear fusion, the possibility of a nasopharyngeal carcinoma should be considered, and this is very important. Any adult patient presented with unilateral otitis media with effusion, we should exclude nasopharyngeal carcinoma. Why? Because one of the most common presentation of, of the nasopharyngeal carcinoma is unilateral otitis media with effusion. Treatment of the otitis media with effusion by observation a large number of patients with otitis media with effusion require no treatment if the hearing impairment is mild. So a period of watchful waiting for three months. But early intervention should be considered in number one, if there is a significant delay in speech and language development. Number two, if otitis media is present in an only hearing ear and the second ear either dead ear or has profound sensory neural deafness. The medical treatment for otitis media with effusion include antibiotics as in acute separative otitis media, short course of steroid, nasal and systemic decongestant and antihistamines if the patient is allergic and use of autovent nasal balloon. This is the ne auto autovent nasal balloon. We ask the child to inflate the balloon through the nose. The surgical options for otitis media diffusion are tympanostomy tubes or ventilation tubes, we usually call them agromants, and adenoidectomy. The aim of tympanostomy tube insertion or insertion of agromants is to allow ventilation of the middle ear space. The rationale for adenoidectomy, the benefit of adenoidectomy is that it relieves nasal, relieves nasal obstruction improves or second tube function and eliminates a potential reservoir of bacteria. This is the procedure of how to do insertion of grommet after doing myringotomy in the area of cone of light. Here, a grommet in its place. Another picture of insertion of grommet and we have different types of agromas. They are made from Teflon. In recurrent otitis media with fusion, we use the long-term agromas like this T-tube. In abbreviation, otitis media with fusion is a common pediatric condition with a peak incidence between two and five years. Symptoms of hearing loss speech and language delay, the management initially watchful waiting for more than three months, medical treatment, example antibiotics, steroid, autovent of no proven value, surgical treatment with the grommet insertion provides definite benefits. Adenoidectomy enhances and extends Benefits. Good luck.